YouTubers, and welcome to another Masters of the Universe Classics review. In today's review, I'm taking a look at Ninja Warrior, or as we all know him, Ninja. Now, the reason why he's called Ninja Warrior on the packaging is because of some sort of copyright business with Mattel, so they're not allowed to call him Ninja, but of course we can call him Ninja because we know that's his real name. So, let's begin by taking a look at the packaging. The figure comes packaged in the standard brown shipper box. Out of the shipper, the figure is then packaged on a standard blister card. This time we also have the addition of an extra yellow bubble taken directly from the packaging of the original vintage figure. And the back of the card shows us some previously released figures in the line, as well as a new character biography for Ninja Warrior. So as ever, I'll just do a run through of the articulation. We have ball jointed head, as you can see he's got quite a lot of movement there. His shoulders can swivel back and forth and pivot out to the sides. He also has articulation at the bicep. Very stiff articulation, actually. I'm really struggling to move this, but as you can see, it is there. And he has articulation at the elbow, which swivels back and forth, and also articulation at the wrist, which, again, all very stiff joints, which is good. He does have ab crunch articulation. Not that you can see it because of his body armor, but as you can see, there is the articulation there, it can go back quite far and bend down quite low. It probably could go further, but his armour is stopping as it's knocking against his belt piece there. And, of course, we have articulation at the waist and also at the legs. So the hips can go out to the side, they can go forward, they can go backwards. They swivel as well at the top of the hips. And we also have articulation at the knee here. And we also have swivel joints here at the top of the boots and we also have ankle articulation as well so very much the standard articulation for a masters of the universe classics figure so let's look at the details on this figure well beginning with the head sculpt very nicely done even though you can't see much of his face it's all covered with this black mask but as you can see there's lots of nice folds and creases which make it look very much like fabric but from what we can see of the face we have these arch eyebrows with these black and red eyes kind of like gambit from x-men the black with the red pupils there are all these smaller details like the seams up and around the sides of the mask moving down to his torso again there's lots going on here lots of detail there's all these fine lines at the top of the sashes around the top of his vest. You have these leather belts coming down the sides here. Very nicely sculpted with the leather texture. These have been painted in a black gloss so that they stand out from amongst the rest of the black. And you have all these little silver buckles along the sides as well. And of course, right at the front, we have this very interesting Asian design of the dragon wrapped around the dagger. This has been very well sculpted. You can see all the individual elements like the handle of the knife, the blade, then the dragon, all of which has its own separate paint decorations. So the hilt is red, the dragon's red, there's the silver nails on the dragon, the dragon's eyes silver, the blade silver, and then you have the silver outline around the, around the back. Very well done. It looks very striking against the black of this figure. He also has this sash that comes down to the side, which is sculpted so that it's all folded and knotted. This isn't in a gloss black, however. This is sort of like a very dark brown maroon colour. Uh, an interesting choice. I'm not sure why they decided to make it different from the rest of it, but it does help in breaking up the figure. So it doesn't really stand out and look weird or anything. And I actually think it looks quite nice. As you can see, he's got these spines and fins on the forearm, and even his hands, they've been given the longer fingernails to make him look more like a creature than entirely a person. And again, carrying on this idea that Ninja is a demon rather than 100% human, we have these quite animalistic looking shin pieces on the top of the boots, and his feet are also very animal-like as well, just like we've seen on other demon-based characters like Skeletor. Moving on to the back, he has this very impressive array of weapons, which I shall go through in a second. And if I just show you, this can be removed, so you can display him without it, if you so wish. Again, this gives you a better look at some of the details here, more of that leather effect sculpted into the back there. So if we just take a quick look at Ninja's quiver, as you can see, this is sculpted in a brown plastic. You can see the clips there, which one goes into the back of his body, one 
clips onto the, uh, the bow and arrow and one clips onto the sword. Again, sculpted so that it looks like it's leather. You've got that nice crisscross effect. You can see the arrows inside. Sadly, this one's slightly bent. These have all been painted silver. Would have been nice if the ends of the arrows were painted different to being completely silver. These can't be removed. These are glued in. But if we take a look at some of his other weapons, we have this bow and arrow. Again, nicely sculpted. You can see all these little elements that have been sculpted in, all these small, tiny little details. Unfortunately, it is all just one tone of silver, which is a shame. It would have been nice if they could have painted some of the other bits, like a darker tone of silver, maybe these little bits coming off here or this section here, just to break it up a little. The actual arrow itself, that has been sculpted on, as you can see. Uh, again, that's a shame. Really, it would have been nice if this was separate so you could pose it to make it look like he did have an arrow or he didn't have an arrow. Again, it would have been nice if this was painted a different colour, if the actual rod here, that could have been a bit, a bit different. And the actual string piece, again, that is all sculpted and that is solid as well. Now, when they released Bo many years ago, they said that they couldn't release him with the string, so they just released the Bo and the arrow they were separate pieces, and then if you wanted to attach the string yourself, you could do that. I don't know why they didn't employ that here, to be honest, but it is disappointing to see that it's just one colour of silver, which is a shame because it is a very nice sculpt. He also comes with his katana. This is all silver, but luckily the hilt does have some additional colouring. And finally, he comes with his nunchucks. Now, the nunchucks are... Okay, they're just sculpted rubber. Sadly, that means the chain is also sculpted rubber, which is really weird because they have released figures in the past and other accessories where chains were actual chains. I think the only reason why they must have done this is because of a cost thing. Um, I mean, as you can see, it is bendy and it doesn't look like it's going to snap or anything, but it would have been cool if it would have been actual chains. Now Ninja, <clears throat> now Ninja is a figure that I wasn't really looking forward to that much. He was a character that I was not exposed to as a child, but when the prototype pictures came out at San Diego Comic Con or wherever, I thought he looked amazing. Such an incredible sculpt with all that stuff going on with his mask, the, the, the vest piece and all the weapons. A very cool figure and I do like the black and red. They really do complement each other, and those little silver highlights really break up the figure. So, although it's not as bright and colourful as, say, the King Hiss that I reviewed, or um, the He-Man that was reviewed last time, it is still a very cool figure indeed. And with all the accessories and stuff, you can pose him in a lot of different cool and dynamic ways. Now, Ninja does come with some additional accessories. Firstly, he comes with an alternate head. So the other head is him minus the mask. Now the reason for this is the original vintage figure had a cloth mask that you could remove and then reveal the figure beneath. So here they weren't able to do that with the cloth and stuff because it would have looked naff and instead they opted for an alternate head. This is really nice. It, it does make me wonder whether or not I want to display him with the mask or without the mask because this is a very cool head sculpt. You have all the fine details of his beard, his teeth, all of these great lines around his eyes and around his mouth and then the hair all swoops back into a ponytail. I kind of wish that it was just hanging down and you can't actually swivel this. So if you try to swivel it, it will snap. It is all one piece. Um, but I would have preferred if it was hanging down, personally. It's a bit like with the Count Marzo figure that came out who also had quite windswept hair. Now he also comes with this additional loincloth piece. Which, okay, it looks alright on him. It's red and gold rather than silver, so it does look slightly out of place, but, you know, it looks the part. But actually, this piece isn't for Ninja. It's actually for Jitsu. So here it is on Jitsu, and as you can see, it complements him far better. The red and the gold fits in with the rest of Jitsu's design. This just makes this figure look slightly more inspired by the 2002 design. There's a bit more going on in terms of detail, and I think this looks really good on Jitsu. It really works well. It just adds a little bit of something extra to a figure. Even here, the detail is phenomenal. The rope, which has all been sculpted so well, you can see all the individual threads. You have this sort of dragon design at the top, all of which has been painted in this really nice gold, which goes so well against the red. And even on the back, you have all of these small details, all these little extra trinkets and bits and pieces that are just hanging off the back. 
incredible detail for just an accessory. So Ninja, like I said, wasn't a figure that I was expecting much of to begin with, but now that I have him in hand, he is a really cool addition to the line. It's great that we've now got a ninja figure to go with all the weird and wonderful characters from He-Man. We have our cowboy, we have our knights in armor, we have our robots, we have our lizard men, all these different things. And now we have a ninja to add to it. We already had a man who does jujitsu, but now we have a ninja warrior. So, thank you for watching this review, guys, and I shall see you next time for some more Masters of the Universe Classics reviews. Thanks for watching.